Hey there everybody, I'm Matt Gary, and on this episode of Coding with the Force, we're going to figure out how to make sure our process builders don't invoke logic in our Apex triggers. Alright guys, so before we get started, let me explain exactly why you would ever care to do this. Why would you care to stop a trigger from a process builder? Um, if you weren't aware, if uh, you do an update or an insert in a process builder, it refires your triggers. So obviously that's not ideal. If you weren't aware, process builders aren't exactly the most performant thing to begin with, but having them refire your triggers on the same object or on a different object, whatever, um, it makes it even worse. So say for instance you were updating a case and the case fire you have a process builder and a trigger on that case <clears throat> object and the process or the uh, apex trigger first fires once you make the update on that case then a handful of other things happen and eventually you get to your process builder and your process builder makes yet another update on the case for one reason or another and then that will cause your trigger logic to fire again and we don't want that. Um, ideally, you know, we do the trigger, we do the logic in between the trigger and the process builder, and then once the process builder is done uh, firing, we just don't go back in time and, and run the trigger again. So let me show you how we can stop this from happening. Um, and the benefits of stopping it from happening are obviously that your processes will run much quicker, right? You're not running your trigger again, so you're saving a lot of time. So thankfully, this is pretty simple. Um, and uh, it's not too complicated of a concept. We will have to write a couple of Apex classes, but they, they are very small. Um, they are not very hard to understand. And um, you can use them for any trigger and any process builder, so you're not re remaking a bunch of code all the time. So let's check it out. The first thing that we're going to have to make is um, a utility class that basically allows you to pass in the name of your trigger or your trigger handler. And, um, you know, in, inside your trigger, you can check for it and tell your trigger, okay, I don't want to run if uh, my name is in this utility class kind of confusing right now but it'll it'll not be super confusing once I write you know once we get into it here in a second so we'll call this um, utility um, uh, we'll say trigger name bypass you can come up with a better name than that <laughs> but for now we'll just call it trigger name bypass and we're just going to do a very simple thing within here. So we're, we'll declare a public static whoa, static, um, and then we're going to make a set of strings, and we'll say uh, trigger names will be the, the the name of the variable is equal to a new set of strings, and um, yeah, so. If you weren't aware, um, static variables, they persist or they have the same information in them through the entire um, executional context of your, you know, your, your DML transaction or your code executing, whatever it is. So say, for instance, um, you make an update to this set, which we're going to do here in just a moment. That update in the set stays that same way in the trigger and the process builder um, and any anything else that operates in between the beginning of a DML operation to the end of it or the beginning of your executional context to the end of it. Um, whereas if this wasn't static and it was what's called a instance variable instead of a static class variable, um, it would be reset every single time that you you know you called this uh, class. So uh, if you're not familiar with static uh, variables, methods, what the static keyword means and how to utilize it, I would look into that. It's very important for software development and, and is very, um, you know, beneficial to be able to utilize when you're, when you're doing development. Okay, so the next thing that we'll do is we'll create a public static, static uh, method called uh, uh, bypass trigger 
and we'll make another one called public static void remove bypass okay and basically all we're gonna do here is we're gonna pass in a string that is the name of the trigger and we are going to add the trigger name What am I doing here? Yeah, no, what? No, oh, there we go. Trigger names <laughs> dot add. I was wondering why I wasn't auto completing. Uh, and then trigger name. Okay, uh, real quick, if you didn't know this, uh, let me zoom in here. If you didn't know this uh, IDE that I'm using, this interface that I'm in right now, it is called IntelliJ and Illuminated Cloud 2. Uh, you can use other things. You could definitely use the Dev Console, I guess, if you really want to struggle through that, or the uh, you know, or Visual Studio Code, or Welcome Suite. Doesn't matter. But if you are interested in you know figuring out how to use IntelliJ and Illuminated Cloud 2, I do have a video. You can check it out, um, and um, yeah, and then you can use it with your own development in the future. Uh, let's finish this last method, and then I will explain what we have done whoa dot remove trigger name okay so pretty simple what I've done here basically I just created a method that allows me to buy you know add a trigger name to the list of um, trigger trigger names that we're gonna bypass how about we rename this I'm gonna refactor this to say um, we'll say bypassed triggers that's a little more straightforward so we'll say right here we're going to pass the name of a trigger into our bypass triggers set and um, add that trigger to the set and then if we want to remove the bypass we're going to um, basically take that exact same set called bypass triggers and remove the name of the trigger from it pretty simple right and the good thing is because this is a static variable again it persists through the entire executional context so both our uh, trigger and our process builder and the next time our trigger is reinvoked by our process builder they'll all have access to the same thing and it'll be the same for all of them which is great um, okay so let me save this and the next thing we're gonna do now that we have this little utility class that um, allows us to bypass our triggers um, well store names of triggers that we'd like to bypass rather then we're going to make another utility and basically what we're going to do is create two utilities that are um, invocable apex methods so that we can call them in our process builder and they're very short simple um, classes um, I try to keep them as simple as possible here. So we're going to call this the util pb for process builder trigger start. Oh, actually, we'll do stop. And in here, we're going to make a public static oh, void um, method that we're going to call uh, stop triggers maybe yeah we'll call it stop trigger and uh, and we'll give it a list of strings or we'll pass to it a list of strings called trigger names and then what we're gonna do is we're going to call this util um, trigger name well, trigger name bypass class that we just made and we're going to pass it the trigger names first array element and uh, did, I, did I no bypass trigger Ooh, there we go so we're calling the method bypass trigger and we're passing it this first element of our array um, or our list rather and um, I'll show you why we just passed it the first one um, basically you have to pass a collection into an invocable apex method which I also need to do here um, 
unless you make invocable variables and doing the invocable variable thing, in my opinion, makes this a little harder to understand and I didn't want to get into that too much. So uh, we'll name this, um, let's see, stop, uh, trigger, and we'll give it a description of, oh, way for uh, no. method allows us to bypass triggers okay um, and I didn't explain this so let me explain this we have uh, a decorator tag called the invocable method here in uh, well in Salesforce and in Salesforce basically what this allows you to do is call this method from a flow or a process builder um, you don't have to necessarily use a label or a description, but it makes it a lot easier to find it in the um, process builder if you at least do a label. And uh, your class will be referenced in the process builder by the label of this invocable method. So basically, again, this just allows us to call this method from our process builder. Okay, and the next thing we're going to do is make another uh, utility class so util pv start and this will this will allow us to uh, start our trigger and I'll explain why you need both of these <laughs> in just a minute this is basically close to the same code that we're gonna run here um, but this will be named start trigger and this allows us to restart a trigger and what do we call this method over here? Remove bypass. Okay, and I keep forgetting to zoom in, so I'm sorry about that. Here's the code for the stop method, and here's the code for the start method. And in case you're wondering, I put all this code in my GitHub so you can always pick it up and, and check it out there as well. Um, so you don't have to type this out. If you don't want to, you can just follow along. Um, so, uh, what does this do? Basically, this uh, is going to allow us to start our trigger from our process builder and or restart our trigger from our process builder. And the reason you might want that well, is for, well, the reason you definitely have to do it is because of database all or none transactions, um, which happen in data loader transactions. They can happen in your code when you do a database.update and false it's very important to start and stop it from within the process builder um, uh, if you just stop it in the process builder and then it uses a all or you're using an all or none transaction the all or none transactions will try to update um, you know successfully run the code several times before it stops but it all happens in the same executional context and again because we're using static variables it will um, you know when it retries this entire process again it'll mess up because it'll think uh, okay I still can't run the trigger I don't want to get too into that there's actually another video I have explaining this whole D DML uh, all or none transaction and how it works with data loader and why it can break a lot of things um, but just know you do need to both start and or stop and restart your uh, trigger within the process builder. Don't just stop it. It could cause problems. And again, if you want a much more in-depth explanation about that, there's another video for it that you can check out. Okay, so what have we created here? We created a, a quick little utility um, that I will say I took inspiration from from the uh, SFDC trigger framework that I think uh, Kevin O'Hara made. Um, if you're not familiar with Trigger Frameworks, uh, I didn't want to get into it in this video, but I wanted to make this very simple utility so that you kind of understood how this this whole bypassing works. If, if you use that um, SFDC simple Trigger Framework um, that Kevin O'Hara made, it is, uh, it, this is all much easier. Um, but I didn't want to get into that and, and bog down this video with trigger frameworks and and all that stuff because uh, some people aren't here to learn that um, 
but I want to give credit where credit is due. That's where I got this um, whole idea from. So how do we stop it in the trigger? Now that we, or sorry, in the process builder, now that we've made these utilities, um, how do we actually leverage these in a process builder? Um, we're almost there, <laughs> but let's make the trigger first and um, demonstrate a couple things. So we'll create a new trigger and I'm about to create a trigger in a way that you should not create a trigger. You should use a trigger framework with trigger handlers and all that kind of stuff. Please do not replicate this trigger the way that I'm about to do it. But again, I'm keeping this very simple so that, um, you know, things are not, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't get off topic, rather. I, I don't want to teach you about case trigger handlers in this video. Um, okay. So we're just going to make this a before insert trigger on the case object. And again, I'm going to keep this very simple. You should use a trigger handler here. Please don't write logic in your triggers. Um, you know what? I'm just going to make a handler. <laughs> I can't do it. Uh, we'll make another class called case uh, trigger handler. And um, we're going to call it here in just a minute. So basically, what we'll do here is we'll say um, if, and again, this logic shouldn't live in here, um, but I'm going to keep it kind of simple. If the util trigger name bypass dot bypass triggers dot contains the name of our case trigger, which is just case trigger, um, then we'll run our case trigger handler. So if we, sorry, if it doesn't, so this um, exclamation point stands for not. So basically if this is not true, um, whoa, what am I doing? <laughs> Too many thoughts at the same time here. Okay, so if, uh, yeah, no, I've got it right. Man, I'm really doubting myself. Okay, here we go. So if this doesn't include <laughs> the the value case trigger here, then we're going to run our case trigger handler. Wow, okay. And um, in the case trigger handler, we'll just have a before insert method. So we'll say public, oh, public um, void. Well, actually, I'll just make it static, public static void. Um, update, or sorry, before insert, and uh, basically what we're going to do is we'll just pass it a list of, oh, a list of cases, which will be our trigger.new, and this will be um, case list. Okay. Um, all right, and then when we have our list of cases, we're just going to do something really simple in here and say case yes, case list. So we're going to loop through our case list. And again, this is code that you don't have to write. This is just for demonstration purposes. Um, but inside of this, we'll say um, cs.subject. So the case subject, we'll set it to the trigger updated me. Cool. Pretty simple. Nothing crazy here. Um, and in here, we'll say we just want to run this before insert method with the trigger.new list. Okay. So, um, what have I done here? It's pretty, pretty simple stuff. Um, and I can't stress this enough. This is really not how you're supposed to write your triggers. You should use a framework. But uh, what we're doing here is we're saying the util trigger names bypass, so this utility that we made. Um, if the bypassed trigger set, so this set that we have here, if it contains the case trigger name, so the name of our case trigger, then um, if it doesn't contain the name of our case trigger, rather, then we want to uh, 
run the before insert method. So basically, if we are not bypassing our case trigger, then let's make sure that we, we run this before insert method. And the before insert method um, updates the subject line of the case. So the trigger updated me. And just um, so we can prove in debug logs that this didn't run, um, we'll say this method. And let's save all that stuff. And hopefully I didn't make any errors anywhere, and I didn't, so we're good. And now that we have a case trigger made and uh, uh, these utilities made, let's finally figure out how to um, set this up in a process builder. So the, we're finally to the easy part. Um, Let's go to our process builders in setup. So we'll go process builder. And we'll do a new case, okay, yeah, case update process builder. Uh, actually, yeah, it doesn't matter uh, what I name this. So and we'll make it so that the process starts when a case record changes, basically. And we'll do the normal things that we do with Process Builder. So we'll grab the case object. And in our instance, we want this, um, what do we do? A before insert. So only when a record is created. And uh, now I really should uh, change this to case, case insert. Um, OK, not super important. Uh, and then for our first criteria node here, we're just going to say, for our purposes in this video, we don't want any criteria. Let's just execute the actions that we need to execute. And so we'll call this um, case subject update. And in our immediate actions, basically what we're going to do is the following. We'll have an action type of apex. And our first action name will be stop triggers, stop trigger. And um, actually, before I do this, let me just let me show you what happens if you don't do what I'm about to do. Not create a record, but update a record. So if we updated a record and we said, um, you know, update subject is the name of the action, and we want to update the case record that started our process, and we want to set the subject. Um, to uh, update updated by process builder. Okay. And I'm just now realizing this uh, is not going to exactly do what I want to show you. So let's, I'm just going to really quickly change this from before insert to before update. So the process builder is going to update the, the, um, the case and then the um, trigger would refire on before update. So let's just make those updates really quick. So if, say we're updating this case. Right now we've got this process builder that updates the subject to updated by process builder. But what we'll see is because we're not stopping the trigger, the trigger is actually going to overwrite that and say, OK, the trigger updated me, not the process builder. Sorry. And um, okay, so we'll activate this process builder, and we'll create a new case really quick. So if we create a new case right now, and we just give it a subject of you know some junk, you'll see that instead of it saying the process builder, Instead of it saying what we put in the process builder, updated by process builder in the subject line up here, it says the trigger updated me, which is what happened in the trigger. And that's obviously not what we wanted, right? So instead, what we can do is we can go to this process builder, and we will clone it since we've already activated it. and we'll create a couple more actions to make sure that the trigger doesn't run. So first, we'll delete this action. 
and then we'll go in here and we'll create an apex action type and we'll name this uh, stop stop trigger and we'll find our apex class called stop trigger and uh, if you don't remember just so we don't get too lost we made this utility in apex and we labeled it stop trigger so that's what we're pulling in here and we also have a variable in the method called trigger names and you'll see right here trigger names is available for us to pass a string to so we'll say case trigger and I'm passing it that value because the name of our case trigger is case trigger and that's what we're looking for in here as well and we'll hit save then for our next action we'll do our record update like we had before so we'll do the update subject and we will select the case that we started with and um, we'll just update the subject again to the PB updated me okay and last but not least we'll add our last apex action called start triggers We'll name start trigger and that is named start trigger and we'll pass the variable name case trigger to it okay and then we'll save all this stuff and we will activate it and now you'll notice that instead of this case being changed to the trigger updated me if we created a brand new case and um, you know fill out its fields it will say the PB updated me and that's because the trigger didn't fire that second time or the logic in the trigger anyway didn't fire the second time so oh my developer console is off but and you'll notice that in your dev logs too so if you win you looked at your your logs for that executional context you'd see that the um, whoa I'm saying whoa a lot this video you'll see you'd see that this um, system.debug wouldn't have this this method ran again which obviously we can we can tell is for sure the case because it left it where the process builder left off this time instead of where the trigger left off which would um, have renamed it the trigger updated me instead of the PB updated me so as you can see it's pretty simple you can use this for any trigger not just one um, and if you wanted to you could even do something like um, you know if you cloned this process you could shut this down for the whole whole time that the process builder is um, running so you could just say stop trigger and enter in here and just create an action where you stop the trigger like so and then you could uh, put that up as the first node and you'd stop the trigger um, from running and then you don't have to do it within your actions but I just wanted to show you that you can start and stop a trigger right here in the immediate actions because this is where the trigger re refiring actually takes place on each of these nodes in their individual areas so you can see how that could kind of balloon out of control if you have you know like 20 case update things in here it's gonna run the trigger a bunch of times um, so anyway you could just stop the trigger right up front and say okay for the entire context of this uh, case process builder let's stop the whole trigger or you could do it on the actions themselves specifically but always and I mean this always please restart the trigger at the end of your process builder um, so you'd need another criteria down here called start trigger and I say this from personal experience of this really killing things 
especially in the data loader because of the way that it operates. Um, if you don't restart your triggers uh, at the end of your process builders, you will see, especially with data loaders that have, you know, data loader files that have errors in them, you'll see problems where things should have updated, but they didn't. And um, again, I do have a video explaining that if you are interested. Um, all right. That's it. So we figured out how to start and stop our triggers in a process builder to make sure that we don't have a whole bunch of trigger runs for no reason in our process builder. Um, and that we could start them, start and stop them at the top level, or we could start and stop them within the actual actions here. And um, yeah, all of this code will be available in my GitHub. If you like these videos, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. I try to do at least one or two a week. And um, yeah, I appreciate you guys watching. If you want more information, there's also the blog post. Um, it's got a lot, of, a lot of junk in there too. So, all right, guys, thanks a bunch for watching, and I'll see you next time.